of that book. Thank you. She just brought me my, she just brought me my, my notes. They are so well organized. I don't need them because I got them. I opened up another, another screen, but this is what you're going to be downloading guys. None of this. This is a, sh this is like a coffin sealed in lead. Going to sink this whole Zodiac. It's all right here, and it's all free to you guys, too, because presentations are never, never as good as the real product. This is the research. Everything you can look up for yourself, you'll be able to download this when this video is over with. But this is the business right here. It collapses almost the entire spectrum of, of narratives that are be pro being promoted out there now. So let's get to it. <clears throat> the Egyptian coffin texts. The pyramid text, the wall text, the entire collection of the ancient Egyptian book of life that was later retitled the book of the dead. Nothing, not a hint of a knowledge of the Zodiac. Process that for a minute. Think about the level of deceit that has been promoted in Hollywood. Think about just how much of a connection in your mind has been created by Hollywood and the publishing industry. When you think of Egypt, you think of ancient Zodiac. When you think of the Zodiac and see the symbols, you're automatically thinking ancient Egyptian. You think there's a correlate there. It's been specifically planted in your mind, although there isn't a trace of connection between ancient Egypt in any knowledge of the Zodiac. Nothing. That's just the beginning. In all 26 Egyptian dynasties, nothing. Not one, not one funer funerary, not one wall text coffin, nothing. Nothing. That, no, nothing in the reliefs, the bas relief, the hieroglyphs, the art, nothing. We see Egyptian astronomy and astrology, and it's very different. Nothing like the Zodiac. So, the first Zodiac appears in Egypt long after Egypt is gone, and it now belongs to Rome. That's the first appearance of the Zodiac, when Egypt was Roman. 75 to 100 BC, Roman Egyptians descended from the Ptolemies, who were, who were Greeks. These are Grecianized Romans, Northern Africa, who built this Zodiac. It's very interesting, guys. It's very interesting, guys. So this led me to believe. This, this, this really had me befuddled at first. Um. I couldn't find, I spent, I spent days going through my library. I just, I couldn't find, I did this research last month and I had to process it the whole time I was on a trip. And I talked about it with the guys that were on my, and, and the girls that were, we had conversations about this and I openly added, you know, it's just so unbelievable. I couldn't put this presentation together until I came back. And I, after I had processed all this information, because like I said, it goes, it, it got, it goes far deeper. Screw Egypt, Egypt out of the picture. If the Zodiac is real, we should find evidence of it in Sumer, right? In the Sumerian texts, Sumerian traditions, Sumerian beliefs. We should find some evidence of it. What about in, in Akkadian? What about Babylonian? I know, I know of Babylonian astronomy. It's called the Mul Appen. Remember, I've told you guys in past presentations, the Babylonians were aware of the phoenix. It was called the Pin Deity, P-I-N. Mule Appen was a study of the stars, but it concerned also the phoenix. The Babylonians were fascinated with the Mule Appen. We have a version of the Mule Appen, the Sumerian version developed after the, the collapse of the vapor canopy, after the great flood. In Babylonian texts, we do have a type of zodiac, but it's not like the one at Dendera. It has 18 constellations, not 12. It's very different, and the animals are different. The concepts are different, but the Babylonians were still fixated, though, on the same things the Egyptians were fixated on, which was the movements of Venus 
the Dog Star Sirius, and the Seven Sisters, and Orion. Seven Sisters are the Pleiades. Almost every ancient civilization was focused on these, just like the Olmec, the Zapotec, the Quiche, Imera, the ancient ancestors of the Inca, the Maya. They were all focused on the Seven Sisters, the movements of Venus. They were, they were, they were watching Sirius, Orion, Arcturus. And they were very, very, very cognizant of the, of the motion of the moon. But none of these ancient civilizations gave a damn about the sun. None. Therefore, it is, this is why we do not find a zodiac in any of these civilizations. Let me reiterate that a little with a little more detail. So, the Epic of Gilgamesh... I have read it. I read Samuel Noah Kramer's translation. I was so impressed that I, I hunted for a different translation of the, of the tablets of the Epic of Gilgamesh. And I came across a woman who I ended up loving her translations. I, I like the details she provides in the commentaries and footnotes. Her name is Maureen Gallery Kovacs. I read two different translations. You can easily find both of them online today. Samuel Noah Kramer and Marine Gallery Kovacs translated the Epic of Gilgamesh. There's not a hint of the Zodiac in that story. The Enema Elish, Seven Tablets of Babylonian Creation. It is a Babylonian cosmological text. Nothing. There's no Zodiac. There's no Zodiac anywhere in the Babylonian cosmographies. Why? How is that possible? So, the oldest tablets around, which have stories that parallel some of the biblical stories, are the Karsag tablets. Sorry, for those of you who haven't guessed it yet, there's no Zodiac in the Karsag tablets. There's no Zodiac in the Atrahasis epic, in the Adapa epic, in the Era epos, nothing. All these widely disseminated and translated into multiple different languages, these major epics of the ancient world that were taught as, as part of the syllabaries and that were taught and known by all the people. There's nothing about a zodiac or any of the signs of the zodiac in any of these traditions. That's a problem. More coffee. <laughs>